Now, when I do problem solving with clients, um, and, and by the way, feel free to ask questions throughout this. Again, if you watch this later, drop a question in the comments. Uh, it'll help me if I don't get it to it this time, I can get to it on a future episode. But um, when we talk about problem solving, there's two things you need to do in turbulent environments very, very quickly. And, that, and I'm gonna go over one this week and one next week or the next time I do it. But the first one is to understand the color of the problem you're dealing with. And there's four kinds of colors. And I've used this for years to help clients get a grasp. John, remember, before you solve a problem, you need to know what the problem is. And the color of the problem gives you an indication of sort of psychologically, how do you need to prepare for it, what it's going to mean, what some of the challenges are. And we use these colors to simply classify four kinds of problems based on their color type. So um, the first color are the green problems. These are obstacles. These are simple barriers. Uh, it's, it, the solutions are obvious, right? You come up to a green obstacle, you, 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 it, it's, a, it's a wall. You need to get over the wall, you use a ladder, you walk around it, you break through it. But once you're past an obstacle, it's in your past, right? It's in your rearview mirror. Um, those are fairly easy, but we call them green problems. They're obstacles. Yellow problems, these are what we call dilemmas. A, a dilemma, you know, the, the benefit of a green problem is the solution is obvious and low cost. A dilemma may have obvious solutions, but none of them are easy or obviously um, cost free. In fact, one of the characteristics of a dilemma kind of problem is that the choices all have consequences and there's no obviously right options. So it, it, often in a dilemma, we're picking between least worst options. And so you can see how all of a sudden from green problems, which are fairly easy, basic obstacles, we've jumped to a high degree of complexity because dilemmas, they may be hard to implement, they may be hard to reverse or unreversible, um, they may have consequences with them, but at least we know what these solutions are and we have information. So th there's a psychological barrier here of not wanting to make a, a choice that's gonna have a consequence, but at least you know what your options are. Uh, a red problem, these we call quandaries, and quandaries are typified by high degrees of ambiguity, uncertainty. See, in a, in a dilemma, we know the cost-benefit analysis, we know the pros and cons, it's, it's, we're, we're struggling between picking the least worst option, but we know what our options are. In a quandary, we don't know what the options are. We may not know what the consequences are. We may not even know what the problem itself is on a good detailed level. Uh, you know, we may have a sense that there's a problem. We may feel that there's something going wrong, but we may not have the full data. So quandaries are uh, examples of um, where the solutions aren't as obvious and you're dealing with a lot of uncertainty. And the worst kind of problems to have are predicaments. So if a quandary is information you don't have on a problem you're going to have to make a decision about in the future, a predicament is when a quandary comes home right? A quandary is not time bound. You have some time to deal with it. A predicament is when you're dealing with the decision you have to make right now, but you are still in this high degree of ambiguity, uncertainty. Um, and this is a, uh, the, the, the predicaments are some of the most challenging problems because you, you're still in this high ambiguity, but you got to make decisions right now. So how do you, um, you know, as a leader, if you're a leader or a problem solver, how do you go through these psychologically, right? I advise folks, if you're a leader, don't micromanage your greens, right? Delegate your green problems out to your problem solvers, hand them out, get them off your plate and, um, you know, go into your problem solving toolbox, whatever you need. Again, the solutions are fairly obvious and the costs are low. So solve your green problems quickly. You need to clear the decks for the yellow, red, and purple problems. If you're a leader and you're dealing with green problems, you're probably too far in the weeds and not having enough perspective, nor are you trusting your teams enough to sort of solve your green problems. Um, when it comes to dilemmas, your, your, your yellow problems, uh, the, the reality, the, the psychological reason we put these off is we sort of recognize that no matter what choice we make, there may be, it may be unpopular, it may not work, so there may be a risk that we're, our reputation's at stake, and so part of the psychological effort of dilemmas is to recognize and be upfront that these are going to be hard choices. You want to engage your stakeholders throughout the organization or community. You want to educate and build consensus to what the problem is 
and a shared commitment to the solution. So those soft skills that are in our problem solving toolbox really come effective for dilemmas. Yes, there's a lot of technical ways to sort of evaluate the pros and cons, but the biggest thing with dilemmas is communicating the, the reality of the challenge of it and the potential consequences so that it's a shared decision or a shared accountability rather than one person feeling like it's all on them. Um, when it comes to quandaries, you need to get ahead of these, right? A quandary is when an ambiguity is present and you've got some time to deal with it. So I, I say attack your red problems, right? While you're, you're delegating your greens to clear your deck, hopefully, uh, and you're sort of building consensus around your dilemmas, spend your energy attacking your red problems because you have some time. Go to those analytical tools, go to those toolbox, and we'll talk about ones throughout these courses, what some of those tools are. But the whole point of a, of a, of a quandary is to clarify your options, get rid of that ambiguity as much as you can, do the analysis, do the work, you might shift it from a quandary back to a dilemma. You might even shift it from a quandary to an obstacle. If you can figure out, get rid of that ambiguity and certainty, that's a good place to be. Um, and of course, predicaments are the worst because you've run out of time, you've run out of the ability to do this sort of analysis of the quandary. And this is where you can really create turbulence in a team um, because everyone tends to sense when a predicament hits. It's not really a confusion. You know, leaders tend to hold things back and sort of be reluctant to share, but teams get a feeling of when a predicament is. Um, and, you know, your behaviors while you're in a predicament, be calm, be professional, um, stick to your guns, be thorough, be respectful. But when you decide, commit to it. It's kind of like a predicament is like you're in a swamp and suddenly you find out there are toxic fumes in the center, right? You've got to rally your team quickly and get moving to find a way out. And that means no matter which pit path you pick, if you keep reversing course, you're going to keep going back to the center and you're guaranteed to get stuck in the middle. So think about predicaments as you don't have time for paralysis analysis anymore. That time is passed in your quandaries. You need to make the best informed decision you can quickly and, and then commit to it until, you, until it's obvious it's the wrong one. But I mean... The worst thing with a predicament is when people get spun around like a top and kind of go back and forth on these, these options and they just end up circling around the center gravity of the problem. And then, then you're losing more time. So again, your green obstacles, delegate them, get them out of the way. Um, your, your, your yellow problems, uh, communicate with your stakeholders. I'll make sure people understand the problems and the choices, your red problems, your quandaries, use your analysis to try and remove that ambiguity in your predicaments, pick a path and stay through it. Now, um, by the way, if there's any questions on this, feel free to ask, but I did have a question um, leading into this, which is how has COVID-19 affected these problem types? And it's, it's interesting because COVID-19, of course, is the cause of this turbulence and it's, it's, it's dramatically changed the problem landscape. I've done this, what color is your problem for years? <laughs> and first of all, COVID-19 throws up a host of obstacle problems, right? How do you wear a mask? Where do you get your PPE? Um, how do you reconfigure for space and social distancing? Um, how do you uh, 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 allocate your... Re there's, there's a lot of green problems in COVID. So as a leader, first thing you need to do is expand your problem-solving team and get folks working on those obstacle problems. Don't try and solve them on itself. The, the dilemma of COVID-19 is that you're constantly dealing with this, these, these tensions between safety and performance. And those can be not always obvious as to, I mean, as leaders, we're used to these kind of X and performance, morale and performance, cost and performance. Now we've got safety thrown in. And safety is something that's much harder to compromise on and maintain any integrity as a leader. So as a dilemma, COVID-19 dilemmas are particularly apt because you're not just asking for extra hours at work or extra focus. People have relatives, they have communities, they have children, they have stakeholders and friends who, who may be at greater risk. Anytime you're asking someone to take a risk of COVID, you're asking them to take a communal risk on behalf of their entire network. And that means it's a lot harder dilemma. Um, Quandaries, the interesting thing about quandaries in COVID is a lot of lingering quandaries that we're focusing to companies disappeared overnight from COVID. You know, everyone's like, well, you know, we're, we're not really sure what the benefits of work from home are. So we'll put that off. We'll do some more analysis. We're uncertain about um, <laughs> the downside of COVID is it shifted all of those quandaries to predicaments. And that was one of the things that was interesting to watch throughout March as 
quandaries became predicaments overnight. The, the problems that you put off solving and resolving got escalated into predicaments and you no longer had time. And at that point, some of them reverted to obstacles and they're like, we're just moving everyone online. I, I talked about how in many companies, there would come a Monday when they just said, everyone goes online. It doesn't matter what it is, just do it. Um, oh, Jennifer, good comment. Yes, yeah, so, so much sense in regards to software development leadership. I'm interested in, if you have, Jennifer, any any e examples to share of sort of green, yellow, red, purple um, problems. But yeah, COVID shifted the whole problem landscape and made it a lot more complex, but you can still use these to think about it. It's, you know, your, your, your quandaries became predicaments. So yeah, your, your reds became purples and a lot new green showed up and you, a lot of them, then you have these dilemmas, but it doesn't mean that the method of how you approach these problems changed. Um, so any other questions on colors of problems? Um, before I continue on, because there's there's one kind of particular problem that has come up a lot, and we'll use these terms as I look at other problems. So when I when I asked on Facebook for the kinds of problems, I look at these problems and I say that's a green problem, or that's a red problem, or that's a purple problem. So we'll use these types in future episodes, which is why I wanted to go through today and kind of describe what they are. Appreciate your time today. If you have any questions on structured systems thinking, have a problem you'd like our help on, or want to know more about developing your own capabilities in systems thinking, please reach out at the email below. We'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in what we do and want to follow our journey, I've added our LinkedIn and Twitter information. And we plan to regularly update this channel with quick tips and case studies to help you get the most out of your systems thinking and lean efforts. If you want to be notified whenever we add new video content, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the red subscribe button below this video.